Welcome to the third round of the Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final, supported by the R&A at Tee Golf and Country Club, where there are 20 European Tour cards and the title of Road to Mallorca number one on the line. My name is Kit Alexander. Alongside me in the commentary box is Warren Humphreys, and Chris Hughes is out on the course. He spoke to Ewan Ferguson before the tournament got underway. Number six in the Road to Mallorca rankings. Yeah. It's been a good season for you. Five top fives. You had a good second here in Spain. Oh, not in this course, but in Spain previously. So a country what serves you well. Yeah. Got to be looking forward to this week. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Also a bit more relaxing for me as should have things wrapped up for next year. I and, think so, yeah. Um, just out in Spain, obviously in the sunshine, trying to improve my rankings as much as I can. Got my family out and stuff like that. So yeah, that's lovely. can enjoy their company and see how good I can do. My goal at the start of the year was to win a tournament. Not done that yet, even though I've came second three times. There's loads of one of the most consistent players, though. Yeah, yeah. So I've, had, I've improved my game and had chances. So I'll just try and kind of capitalise on hopefully being in a good position in the rankings and yeah. uh, do as well as I can do. Hurley Long has enjoyed a consistent season, including six top tens and an Olympic appearance. You look secure for promotion, 15th in the rankings at the moment. But how does that experience playing with PGA Tour golfers in yeah. events like the Olympics help you? Well, it helps big time. I mean, anytime you play under like really big pressure, you, you learn from it. If you do it the right way, and I, th I think I did. So, played the last day with JT, Justin yeah. Thomas. That was uh, that was crap. Yeah, 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 that was pretty <laughs> sick. So uh, we both played nicely that day. So that was good fun. This is how the Road to Mallorca rankings look ahead of the Rolex Grand Final with all these players guaranteed promotion and battling it out for top spot. But it's a tense week for the rest of the field looking to finish the job or force their way into the top 20. Each of the 45 players here has the chance to do that with a strong week. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from round two. Germany's Yannick Paul has played the par fives with some aplomb this week, helped by this immaculate bunker shot for a birdie on the second, en route to a five under par, 36 hole tally. Two time winner this season, Marcus Helligkilde, knocked this birdie putt in on the 18th to cap off a bogey free 67. He had a 69 in the opening round for a six under par total at halfway. 33-year-old Jesper Kennegaard needs a really good finish this week to gain his playing rights for next year. And with putts like this on the ninth, for his third two over the two days, his play is right on track at six under par. JC Ritchie was on fire as he picked up four shots in seven holes from the 11th, including here on the 17th as he ripped his wedge back just underneath the hole. He would bogey the final hole, though, for a 67. South African Oliver Becker has played very steady golf so far this week with scores of 66 and 69. His last birdie, one of eight over the two days, coming here at the 14th, courtesy of that fine pitch shot. Richie and Becker share the halfway lead. We're in for a tasty weekend with so many quality players lurking in their slipstream. Welcome to day three here at Tee Golf and Country Club. Top of the leaderboard, two South Africans, JC Ritchie and Oliver Becker. They're currently on seven under, looking to get their rounds off to a good start. But there's plenty of players in behind poised to make a move today, but it's gonna be very difficult. We thought yesterday's conditions were tough. Today, it's another ball game. You can see the wind turbine in the background. That's absolutely rip roaring. My hair, that's taken a beating this morning. But if any player makes a move today, trust me, they'll be shooting up that leaderboard. Yes, it has got a bit colder and windier as each day has passed this week at Tee Golf and Country Club. So there are a few layers on as our final three ball got their rounds underway in tough conditions. After rounds of 70 and 71, the tall Englishman Jigger Thompson is looking for a good weekend to get himself back into contention. And this second shot to the par five second, which produced a fine eagle, getting him off to the perfect start. 
Yannick Paul is looking over his shoulder this week at 19th in the road to Mallorca standings. He bogeyed the first today, but this sensational hole out from the sand on two gave him an eagle. As for Jesper Kennegaard, his putting prowess continues as he holds another long putt for an opening birdie to kickstart his round as he moves swiftly to seven under par. Marcel Schneider made a fast start. A birdie on two was followed by another at the next hole, courtesy of this super approach to the elevated green at the 434-yard third hole. Oliver Becker has dropped out of the lead with an early bogey. And Richie now has Jesper Kennegaard for company, following the Swedes' birdie on the opening hole. And it's to JC Richie we go on the third, a man who said earlier this week he's enjoying the grind of the tough conditions. And he's going to need to grind this weekend because it's only getting windier, isn't it, Warren? It certainly is. It's blustery out there. It's not a consistent wind either, and that's something that the players really don't like. Dogleg hole here left to right, but the wind off the right for the players. Becker struggled off the tee yesterday. Took him until the 10th to hit his first fairway. And he doesn't quite find the short stuff with that one either, but not in too much trouble, just off the right edge of the fairway. I suppose the thing about here, the rough not too thick this week. There is an advantage being on the fairway because there's placing as we see Tario play his approach here. He's the road to Mallorca number one coming into the week. 72 in the opening round, but bounced back with a joint best of the day, 67 yesterday. And he appears to be picking up right where he left off. Richie then with the second shot up the hill here at the third. Awkward flag right on the back of the green. Bunker protecting the right hand side. It's a tough one to get out with that wind off the right as well. So middle of the green, not too bad a result for Richie. Does mean he's putting uphill as well. well Heller killed her with a far better angle, Warren. Yeah, a fine player, this chap. Little curtailed follow through there, trying to beat one down into the breeze. Just a little bit above the hole. So Becker, his approach play was actually really, really good yesterday, despite the errant driving. Yeah, good compact looking swing. Again, forcing that one up the green. That's not easy to do on these wet services. So that's a good shot in. Yannick Paul to save his par on the fourth. This would keep him at six under par. to be though he's dressed for the weather woolly hat on waterproof trousers as well there's no rain in the forecast but perhaps just an extra layer for a bit of warmth for the man 19th in the road to Mallorca standings uphill left to right breaking putt for Richie for the birdie on three oh, that's a good aggressive putt like to see that attacking the hole now Tario very unique putting action. Oh, just wriggled it in the left-hand side there, Warren. Yeah, it's not a putting action that fills you with a lot of confidence, but it obviously works. You can't win as much as his one this year and have a poor putting stroke. And speaking of winning a lot, Heller killed it. He has two Challenge Tour victories to his name this year, just like Santiago Tario. Yeah, giving that birdie putt down the slope the respect it required there, but that should be a stress-free tap-in for his par. So, Heller killed that steady start today, all pars to this point. Teo Manacero up on the difficult par for fifth, not getting that one in. It's an excellent approach from Becker from the right-hand rough to leave it under the hole, about 14 feet. They putted it straight through the break. That was a real rush of blood.
Both of those pars were made, though, by Becker and Ritchie, and it's still Kennegard and Ritchie tied at the top of the leaderboard. Join us again after the break to see how their quest for promotion unfolds. Welcome back to the Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final, supported by the R&A, where the players are chasing promotion to the European Tour. For the overnight leader, JC Ritchie, it's been a steady start with three straight pars. But this second shot to the fourth will produce his first birdie of the day, and he moves to eight under par. Twenty twelve Challenge Tour number one Espen Kofstad makes two birdies and two bogeys in his first six holes. And this second shot from the rough on seven set up a birdie that got him to minus six. The number one player on the road to Mallorca, Santiago Tario, has had two birdies so far. But they've been tempered by a bogey and a double bogey for this fine shot at the seventh we get him back to even par for the day. He remains at three under. Denmark's Marcus Hellekilde was riding the par train, and he notched another thanks to this stunning 35-yard bunker shot from a downhill lie behind the fifth green. He was still six under par. Unlike Hellekilde, Becker wasn't able to save par on the fifth, and he's now three shots off the lead, held by his compatriot, J.C. Ritchie. Here is Ritchie on the par three, sixth. Tricky little pin at the front right here. There's wind behind them and slightly off the left. False front to the green as well, so you've got to pitch it well up. Oh, and Ritchie hasn't done that. And that's going to leave himself a very awkward little chip. <laughs> yes, for Kennegard. See, so 40th in the road to Mallorca coming in, so needs, well, something like a, a top three finish on his own, probably even better to force his way in, but he's doing a good job, and he's pin high there. We've seen him hold some long putts this week, so you wouldn't bet against that one going in either. Nikolai Christensen, all pass so far on his car today. Coming uphill to the seventh. Short iron in, and that's very well played. And it's hard to convey how cold it is out there and breezy. Players well wrapped up. Another killer. Bit of a miscue off the tee to be this far left. He does play with a lot of freedom, though. Really like his action. Very confident young player. He gave a refreshingly open interview yesterday, said he was pretty much aiming for the middle of the greens all day and sometimes missed it by eight metres or so. And that meant some were stiff and some were 16 metres away. Can a guard for the birdie. Ah, just stayed on the high side. It's been a great year for him. Started it on the Nordic Golf League with no real status on the Challenge Tour. But he's come in, had a runner-up, a sixth-place finish as well at this level. Interesting choice of club here for Richie using the putter from a long way off the green. After the first couple of rounds, he leads the par three scoring at a couple under. They've been tricky holes to play. He's got some work to do to save his par. Yeah, Christensen, similar line than Kennegard was on, but a bit shorter. What did he learn from his playing partner? Well, that looked like it actually went the other way. So, just a par for Nikolai Christensen here at seven. That's going to be a battling par if he can knock this one in. Uphill. Ooh, last legs, but made it. Good par saving putt. Go down as a one putt on the statistics. Very gutsy from JC Ritchie there, and that keeps him with that slender one-shot advantage a third of the way through the third round. Right, up ahead to the next hole, the seventh tee. A positional tee shot, this one, just 355 yards. Really just looking to avoid a big bunker on the outside of the slight dog leg. 
Richie, our leader, has had a chat with Chris Hughes. JC, the man who thrives off these tricky conditions, making it look like work. <laughs> it's it's everything but just easy. It's 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 tough out here. Um, it, the wind's blowing. It's cold, um, and the golf course is good, so um, it's a real good challenge. Well, this is the challenge for the seventh hole. You can play over the trees on the corner of the dog leg, but most players tend to lay up with an iron and then play the pitch up to a green surface which they can't quite see from down on the fairway so it's always a little tricky gauging the length of the shot Becker a couple over par for his round so really needs to find some momentum but not in the ideal position here oh, what a shot that is I mean it's so hard to play a shot like that you've got to be absolutely perfect with the strike and he was it almost seems like Becker plays his best golf when he's out of position and having to do something with his iron play. Ought to have come off it a little bit there, Richie. Very smooth through the ball. So a sensible play into the middle of the green. It is a day to be conservative. That's what Helen Kilder said he was going to do in his post-round interview yesterday. Fairways and greens. That one looks to be heading towards the putting surface, and yes, a good approach. But as we've seen, tricky to read from there, from the middle of the green. Ninth, they're using a different tee today as the number one player on the road to Mallorca. Tario plays to this tough hole. And more trouble for him. He's had to scramble quite a bit so far in this third round. JC Ritchie for birdie on seven to extend his lead. Oh, that had a chance, Warren. It was a beautiful roll, wasn't it? The surfaces here to put on, they're absolutely perfect. No complaints there as we go back to Tarrio on the ninth. Spaniards 94 in the world rankings now. Those couple of wins on the Challenge Tour this year, some good results in his starts on the European Tour as well. And Showing his class there, now a top 100 player. And he killed it in the middle of the green, so sticking to his game plan, aiming for the center of the putting surfaces and just a slight misread. Straightforward par though, no stress and strain there. Tario take advantage of what was a good bunker shot to save his par here on nine no and I think he knew it early didn't he always left of the hole unfortunately so that is a dropped shot for Santiago Tario he's back to three under par his girlfriend on the bag there caddying for him well for his birdie after that Fabulous second shot from the sand. Absolutely dead centre, no trouble in making his birdie. So a step in the right direction again. The top two are bogey free today in tough conditions, but they're just heading into the most difficult section of the course around the turn. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. The leaders are having to contend with strong wins in the third round of the Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final, supported by the RNA at T Golf and Country Club. Yeah, conditions really are pretty wild out on the course as Michael Hoey plays his second shot to the par 5 11th. It's not been a good front nine for the man from Northern Ireland, out in three over par 38. And he may not have made this eagle putt that he sets up for himself, but his birdie stopped the rot of three bogeys in his last six, back at one under. 33-year-old Kennegard found himself deep in the wood chippings after this crooked tee shot on the par three ninth. He had to settle for bogey, but he got the shot back with a birdie on the 11th. Mateo Manacero has always had great feel on the greens. And this putt from the front of the par 5 11th. 
proves that he has not lost any of his touch. And he's battling away at two under par. Santiago Tarrio parred the tough 10th. And he notched a fifth birdie of a topsy-turvy day with this well-judged two putt on the par 5 11th to get to five under. Toughest hole on the course all week has been the par 4 10th, where a par almost gains a shot on the field. And that missed par putt for Ritchie means the 10th has played 23 over its par today. And Ritchie back to even for his play so far. Helic Kilder was seven under par as he fired his three wood off the 10th tee and he spoke to Chris Hughes as he made his way down the fairway. So Marcus, your tee shot then kind of gave me an idea of how you played today, a little stinger down the fairway, but how tough is this? It's, uh, it's incredible tough today, um, but it's fun. It's fun, uh, you need to hit some, uh, some kind of like um, low shots, draws, fades. Um, Mix the game up. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's not your normal game of golf, this, yeah, but I like it. <laughs> it's like a proper winter golf. This, but you just saying to me then that you kind of, as a three ball now, you're all kind of embracing this, the situation you're in, the conditions, and having fun with it. Yes, 100%. Like, I love hitting those kind of low stinging yeah. shots and just playing around with, like, just golf in general. And when this win is up, it's, it's my opportunity to, to shine in some way to, to do that. So it's now a three-way tie for the lead on seven under par. The man at 21st in the rankings, Nicholas Norgard Moller, has eagled 11 and birdied 13 to climb into a tie for sixth. And here is Helikildi. He's missed the fairway a long way left on the 11th, but it's playing strongly down breeze. Over 550 yards, but only a short iron in because of the strength of the wind behind. Uh, very much an outside eagle chance. Have to make use of the par fives today, playing downwind. Yeah, it's an iron in for most players, this 11th for their second shot today. But, well, Richie, he's closer to the second fairway. That is just left of him there. So having to hoist one up over the trees. Oh, and doing it to fantastic effect, just onto the back apron there. But a really good look for eagle for the South African. Well, if the 11th is pretty easy today, the 12th is an absolute brute. 229 yards straight into the teeth of the wind. Water short of the green as well. Bunkers left, a really tough par three. Anything on the green, I can tell you, is a great shot. That hole has struck fear into my heart every time we've seen it this week, Warren. Now Moller. Going in the low route up on the 16th. It's been a great charge from him today in difficult conditions. You don't want to go past that flagstick downwind though, so just erring on the side of caution there sensibly. This is Helikilda, the long eagle putt on 11. It's downwind. Yeah, downwind up a little tier, left to right breaking. Oh, okay. Nothing really to write home about, but he should make the putt for his birdie. And the difficult 12th. Kennegaard, it's all uphill from the front there. That's a really good effort from the Swede. Yeah, he would tap that in for par. Further ahead on 16, the uphill putt there. For Moller, man who makes more birdies than anybody else so far this season on the Challenge Tour, makes lots of eagles as well, but has been prone to letting a few get away. Yeah, he certainly has plenty of clubhead speed, doesn't he? Massive hitter, and that has led to some inconsistency. Yeah, can he make eagle here? Not quite on the green, but remember, there's been placing on the course, so able to clean the ball, and he does make the eagle. That is a really good move by Richie. So fantastic timing as well after the drop shot on the 10th. He regains the lead with that stunning eagle. Yeah, I don't suppose he'll get too excited because he knows what's coming up. <laughs> the evil 12th 
birdie putt here. I said he wouldn't have too much trouble holding this. Keep fingers crossed. Well done, straight in. Yeah, you'd already given it to him, and no mistake from Helleg Kilda. He's a pretty cool, calm customer, isn't he? That wonderful eagle has thrust JC Ritchie back to the summit. Helleg Kilda hasn't dropped a shot since the 12th hole of the first round. is Richie then on this 12th it's, it's a long shot certainly a two iron at least you would think today he made a brilliant two here yesterday big long extension through the ball but he's just hiked it a little bit and that is where you do not want to be got to pray for a decent lie over there oh with that pin on the left I'm I'm putting it out there I'm saying it's impossible to get up and down from there Ooh. You can see how strong it is. Rescue club here for Heli Kildy, knocking one down. Curtailed follow through, bit of a stinger. And that also missing on the wrong side, really. Short siding himself a fraction. I suppose with the water creeping in in front of the green and around to the right of it, left is the safer miss. But yeah, they are going to face really difficult recovery shots from there as. We go to Jesper Kennegard. I like the way the caddy was sheltering behind the clubs there. <laughs> Showing how strong the wind is, maybe. Trying to keep themselves cool. It's very un Mallorca weather like. <laughs> yes, it is. So, what can JC Ritchie do from the wood chippings here? He's not playing towards the green, he's playing away to the front edge and not making it. Well, he did have a little sort of alleyway just in front of that bunker to get up to the pin there, but just didn't give it enough beans. Can Helikildi do any better? Yeah, a lot of loft on the face of this, not much room to work with. And both players struggling, not on the green in two. That's a bit of a surprise. I thought he might have been able to get a little closer than that. Gavea. Second in the road to Mallorca standings coming in this week, and he's got this for Eagle on 18. His coach, David Llewellyn, former World Cup winner with Ian Woosnam here this week to edge him on, and he'll be... How did that not go in? It I looked like it was going in and then came backwards. I can see it urging that one in, almost the wind blowing it out of the hole there. That is some round of golf, though, today in this... Oh, in these conditions, 67. Yeah, that Brilliant gets, score. Yeah, that gets him to five under par. He's in good form as well. Third last week at the Challenge Costa Brava, Ricardo Gavea. Well, this is for par now for Richie. Oh, he is making a meal of this hole. Yeah, well, over the first two days, he's played the par threes up to now very well, so it's a bit of a surprise. Julian Brunt to save his par from a little bit of distance. And he does, very good. One of the most consistent performers on the tour this year. Also a two-time winner, barely misses a cut. Well, back to all the problems on the 12th. And he killed it here, using the putter from off the green. Well, not going to be a par, but he will at least make a bogey. Richie's still got a lot of work to do as Kenny Gard who's hardly missed a putt in our coverage so far over the first three days. Knocks another one in. Yeah, he wields that flat stick wonderfully and now to eight under par. Hasn't won on the Challenge Tour this year, but did get a win on the Nordic Golf League earlier in the season. So knows what it feels like to hold a trophy in 2021. Oh, that's huge. Massive for his momentum, that, isn't it, Warren? Well, there's two great putts. He's hold one for the Eagle, one for the bogey. Well, it's been a roller coaster start to the back nine for Richie. Well, Kennegar just appears to be gaining some real momentum. We'll find out who has the best of the closing exchanges after this break. There are seven players within three shots of the lead as we head into a closing stretch of holds that offer plenty of scoring chances. When 
Moller came to the 18th. He was four under par for his round, five under for the tournament, found the penalty area away to the right, and after the ricochet off the tree into the penalty area on the other side. That would all end up for him with the seven. And he's back at three under. Santiago Tario let a shot go at the 15th, but this second shot at the 379 yard 16th helped him get straight back to three under par. He is chasing hard to try and finish as number one. Overnight leader Richie, his woes continued here on the 13th. Another bogey, so three bogeys and an eagle to start his back nine. Kennegard now has the solo lead following those back-to-back -back bogeys for Richie on 12 and 13. Helikilda has added a couple of pars to stay minus seven through 12. And this is the Dane on the 15th. Teeing up, up over on the right-hand side of the tee box. And proving to be the correct strategy as he fires that one into about 12 feet for his birdie. Uh, Richie needs to steady the ship. Similar placement on the tee for him as he launches this one high into there as it comes uphill. It's on the dance floor, not too close. Three pretty good tee shots from our final pairing. Saw the mitts on there, so that tells you just how cold it is as we get later in the day. Kennegard, though, is heating up late in the day here at Tee Golf and Country Club. It's another well-judged shot downwind into 16. Outside birdie chance for Richie here at the 15th coming uphill. Needs to be bold. Have to say, he has been bold pretty much with his putting all day. Have a little bit of work left to do to save his power. He doesn't want another bogey. Not too many of them so far on the back nine. Yeah, the par threes have been interesting for Richie today. We've seen him have to scramble for his life. Sario into the 17th. And that leaves him uphill. That is a really good chance for Birdie. Yannick Paul. 19th coming into the standings at the start of the week. So he'll be feeling the pressure. He'll be feeling pretty tense out there. Knows he can't afford to make too many mistakes. It's a really impressive performance from him. It's Ben Kennegard now. We've seen him hold some yardage this week. And that's another one. That is a golden putter. I hope he takes it home with him. Keeps it warm overnight. It's pretty cold out there. Bitterly cold, but it's not affecting the use of the putter. That's red hot. Yannick Paul to get to five under par. Just took enough of the break. The crowd enjoyed that one. Five under, as we say, so much pressure on Paul. And really, he's performing the best of the guys that are right around that top 20 bubble. Dario now with his putt on 17. Strange putting strance, arms so far away from the body, but there we go. He makes it as well. Certainly not out of it. Four under par for the number one player on the Challenge Tour this season. Alec Hilda from just short on 15 for his two. Oh, in it goes. He looks ice cold, doesn't he? Just so calm, cool and collected. But he actually looks like he's enjoying it out there. Some of them are feeling the pressure and the tension, but not so for him. Richie tidied up for his par. Kennegard now fourth birdie of the day. Keeps him ahead of Helikilda by just that single stroke. Richie is hanging in there on a tough day. Uphill to the green, uphill lie for Helikilda here at 16. And getting that whole high, good judgment there. Coming down the breeze. And Kennegard on the penultimate hole of his day. It's been his back nine so far. His dad was a former international handball player for Sweden. And he showed some soft hands there himself to caress that one in close.
Ritchie here on the 16th. Long outside chance for a birdie. Okay, not quite able to leave it dead. He's had to really work hard, make some of these powers on the back nine. It's been Costard. Well, he's had a visit to that penalty area on the left on the final hole. This is fifth shot. Really needs to get up and down to stay in this tournament. Every chance of doing so. Super little pitch in there from the Norwegian. Left hand below right, but both of them very snug together there on the Padishal for Helikildi, but quite hard enough right line wrong pace yeah, he got himself in contention he was in the final group at the dutch open on the european tour earlier this summer so he knows how it feels to be in and around the lead on a big stage becker for his birdie to get to seven under oh i think he thought he had that one just not quite been the South Africans day today. Can a guard for well the shortest of tap-ins for a birdie on 17. Very good. Gets to four under par for his round and he moves to ten under. Par at the last for a 67 and his last two rounds on the challenge tour. In the third round, he's both shot 67. Big tee shot for Helle Kilda here. As we've seen, it's a great opportunity for a birdie this 17th if you can find the short stuff. Yes, yeah, wind left to right on the 17th, so it's right to left and into the players as they play the 18th hole. 617 yards, testy par five. And it requires two really good shots to get home, especially today in this cold wind. You can see the amount of water away to the left and while well, quite a few players push their second shots into the penalty area away to the right. Well, Kennegaard obviously couldn't get up in two, so this is third. Has given himself a good angle for it though. Oh, and that's all over the flag, just a touch left of it. It's going to be a fair bit of break from left to right on that though, but if it goes in, Kennegaard can get to 11 under par, and that was the total that Andre Lisa won this tournament with last year. Ball a little bit below the feet there for Riches. He plays up to the green on 17. Almost helping him just to manoeuvre that ball a little left to right to the right flag. Julian Brun, green side bunker on 18. This is third shot. He's quietly going about his business this week. A winner just a couple of weeks ago. Well, you can see how fast it is there if you get above the hole. So about six or eight feet back up the slope for a closing birdie. And second shot here for Heli Kilder at 17 from the right hand trees. That's pretty well done. Sticking to his game plan, middle of the greens, not trying to get too aggressive. So another look at this Kennegaard stroke that has been in absolutely devastating form. Has he got one more in him here on 18? <coughs> no, it will just be a part. But that is an excellent round of golf. 67 back in 32 blows for the Swede. As you can see, coming in at 40th in the row to Mallorca. Knew he needed a massive week. And he is three quarters of the way there. Well, Helkeda, half a chance here on 17, I suppose, coming across the slope. Don't hold too many of those. Good 30 footer there for him. Julian Brunt back up the slope for his birdie to get to five under par. So a pretty tidy scorecard, really. Just the one bogey, the one birdie at the end there. All the rest pars. 
Yes, no one's managed to be blemish free today. No bogey free rounds, or there can be. Now the putt goes awry for Richie, so no birdie for him on 17. Kind of guard in the clubhouse then. 10 under par for the first time really all week. A two shot lead has opened up. Helle Kilder at eight under, but he's still got the 18th to play, and here he is. Ball below his feet off of a slight downslope. Wood chipping's under the feet. This is difficult, Warren. It's also very brave. Not many people would take that shot on. Oh, and he nearly got away. Oh, oh, my goodness me. Eagle chance coming up. How did that happen? Skipping out of the bunker. I don't know, but if I was him, I'd be getting a lottery ticket on the way home. That was a, a very large slice of fortune. Can he take advantage of it? That's a great view of that 18th green. This is slippy, though, coming down the hill. Green's running at just under 12 on the stint meter. You see, and that's gone the extra foot or so past the hole, more than he wanted. Oliver Becker with a bit more left for par than he would have liked. Never quite was running at the hole with enough conviction. It's going to be a couple over par for his round today, but on the whole, scoring has been pretty good. Much tougher conditions today. In fact, course today playing two shots harder than it did on day one when there was a little bit more warmth about and the breeze was down. Hella Kilda to get within one of Kennegard's lead. The birdie putt on 18. Yes, and it goes. Really good stuff from the young Dane. One bogey, one, two, three, four birdies, and it all adds up to a 68 and a nine under par total. Richie just finished off as well in the final group. Somewhat disappointing back nine for him, that eagle aside. Four birdies in the final eight holes mean Jesper Kennegard is the man to catch with just 18 holes to go as he goes in search of a timely first ever Challenge Tour victory. Jesper, 67, solid back nine. Mm -hmm. What was the secret? Um, just like yesterday, I played well. Um, it's tough out there, obviously. Um, but, um, made a good one on 16 and great par save down here on 14 and had a pretty good one on 13 as well. So. I was playing pretty well the first seven holes, but I didn't really get him to drop. But then, you know, staying patient and just see what happens. So it's tough, yeah. As it stands, Hellekilder would be the third Dane to top the Challenge Tour rankings after Thomas Bjorn in 1995 and Joachim B. Hansen in 2018. Kennegard projected to jump to fifth with a win. Richie Moller and Long would snatch the final three European Tour cards, but one shot could change everything in the final round. Make sure you join us tomorrow for the exciting and dramatic conclusion to the Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final, supported by the R&A.